This is Chicho. As always, welcome to my channel. Now, what we're gonna do in this video is um, I'm gonna show you guys how I end up making my teas, okay? And if you've seen my videos, uh, you'll notice for the long videos, I usually have some kind of drink with me and it's either lemon water or tea. So what I'm gonna do in this video is uh, show you guys how I prep my tea. And this video basically came about because of a, a request that was sent my way asking me what it is that I was drinking during the video and I've had a few people ask me that and this person asked me how I, you know if I would put a video together to show you guys how I end up doing this okay and this was a few months ago and I sort of you know the video got delayed and delayed and delayed and I did promise to make it and I haven't forgotten right um, and at some point and I'm sort of glad that I got delayed because at some point I sort of decided to overlap this with a little bit, little bit of mathematics. So what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to show you guys how I make my tea. And while we wait, and I've filled up uh, a couple of pots of water here that we're going to boil. So while we wait until the water boils and uh, after we, you know, set the teas up and let them simmer, let the flavor come out, we're going to do a little mathematics uh, while we wait for that stuff to happen. Okay. So as for my main types of teas that I drink and um, actually I should turn these on I guess and one of these things this one uh, is like a turbo boil so it boils really fast and this one is a slower slower boil so I'm gonna turn this on here as well and there's um, one thing you should keep in mind there's two different types of uh, teapots one where the handle is up top here okay where it doesn't bend and another handle is the ones that you know the handle bends right and i end up using both of these this one um this uh, this pot is actually the bottom is closer to the elements it's closer to uh, the bottom so it ends up boiling faster uh, and this pot is a little bit higher so it boils a little bit slower but i usually end up using this pot because this pot i sort of use i guess the middle eastern style or asian style where I take, uh, you know, either a porcelain pot or a glass pot and I mix the teas in there and I put this on top, okay? And I'll show you guys how this works. So I just want to point this out. There's two different types of teapot, um, um, pots where I boil water and we end up using both of them. And this one I usually, because it boils faster, if I'm only making this type of tea, I usually boil it in this and transfer it over in this one. Or I boil water in this and I have you know, larger teapots that we sort of put stuff in there and we put a little heater on top or a little, I guess, cloth thing on top where it contains the heat and the tea sort of simmers in there. And we end up doing that as well, okay? So just a heads up, we're gonna make two types of teas, one in this pot and one in this pot, okay? As uh, for my main types of teas that I drink, uh, there is one major one that I end up having, which is sort of, um, uh, is this thing, sort of, I call it Persian black tea. And I, you know, Persian stores, if you have access to a Persian store, they have amazing, amazing tea blends, right? And this is one of the blends and usually buy this in a big, uh, big carton thing. And I transfer it into this because um, you really don't want tea to be exposed to light too much. And we go through this fairly fast so it doesn't, the flavor doesn't deteriorate. Okay. Uh, another main type of tea that I drink uh, or main ingredient that I use to make teas is mint. Okay. And this is mint that uh, we end up growing or we end up picking in the, in the neighborhood, right? And I bring it back and uh, wash it. Whenever, whenever I pick it, I, you know, wash it and then I dry it and I put it, you know, put it in containers, either glass ones or different types of containers that we have. And I usually do this um, in the summer, right? And towards the end of summer or midsummer, 
you know, all the way through the summer, really, mint just grows. So I keep on harvesting, dr washing, drying, and putting stuff away for the winter. Okay. Uh, another ingredient that I use for tea is um, something that I pick up again at a, a usually a Persian store, and it's rose buds, the rose hips, I guess, um, the flower. And this gives a really nice sour bitter taste to the tea and you don't need very much and I use this this is basically the third type of ingredient the third highest ranking that I use third or fourth okay um, something else that I use that we just recently started using the last couple of years which is uh, a plant that we started growing and I found out that you can actually make this into tea and it's called uh, lemon ver verba verbanar okay and it's a plant that uh, we have we don't harvest this outside of the house we just have a plant that gives a lot of leaves so we sort of take this and it's got sort of a lemon flavor to it so again we harvest this uh, um, wash it dry it jar it and this is the second one we've gone through um, for the winter right so two of these things have lasted us all the way through the winter okay and hopefully it'll last us all the way to the end of spring um, where the flowers will start coming out again okay another ingredient that i use a lot okay to make tea is ginger okay i either use fresh ginger and this is a you know ginger stem that i already cut up uh, and this one we're going to use by um, we're going to simmer it in this one and when you do this uh, you can get multiple pots out of this, okay? And when it cools down, I just pour it into a jar and put it in the fridge and you have cold ginger tea. It's fantastic, really. Okay, it's absolutely amazing. And another version of ginger that I use, sometimes if I want a little bit of sweetness, is this product that we end up buying. It's like ginger chunks and it's coated in cane sugar okay so it sort of comes in packages it's, it's sold as candy to a certain degree but it's organic ginger with organic cane sugar and that's the only thing it is right and you can actually i usually don't put my fingers in it but you know it's a chunk this is like a large chunk and you can just eat it it's really good actually it's super delicious so those are the five ingredients that i use now as you can help here, the water is boiling. This one's boiling, right? And this one boils super fast. So I'm going to prep this up right now. Um, so basically, you know, you keep your um, your jars clean, as clean as possible, right? Sometimes you end up leaving tea in there for a couple of days and stuff like this. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to throw the ginger in here. And when I do this, this is going to be good for at least a couple of days, okay? I'm, I'm okay with keeping, you know, add, boiling more water, adding more water constantly to this um, for a couple of days. Um, after two days, the flavor is gone, but, you know, it does have that ginger taste to it, okay? So this one's nicely boiled. So let's just pour this in this. And this porcelain jar takes a fair bit. Uh, a fair bit of water, right? Nice. Okay. And what I end up doing is just cover it up. And you let it sit there for, you know, um, 15, 20 minutes is good. Sometimes 10, sometimes if you want a quick little ginger flavor, just put it in five minutes later, take it. But the longer it sits there with the cover on top, uh, the more flavor comes out, okay? And I still have uh, boiled water left. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make one blend. I'm gonna, right now I just feel like having uh, the Persian black tea in it here. Let me show you what this looks like, okay?
like sometimes it's blend sometimes it's uh orange pico this one i think is uh cylon cylon um with uh, uh it, sometimes it's earl gray so it's different mixes okay and what i end up doing is and usually 100 percent and i've this is something my friends sort of go what are you using this for uh the porcelain uh teapot that i use for this okay i always have a plate on the side of the counter where i put this in because what ends up happening is if you put this down on the counter it might pick up dirt and then when you put this on top of this the dirt might fall into the water so i like to keep the bottom of this thing fairly clean okay or clean period right so always put it in the plate and what i end up doing is uh, i'm just going to add a couple of couple of spoonfuls and it's going to be dark because i'm probably going to be drinking this all day and i do drink tea all day basically okay so that's that now one thing you need to do uh, or i end up doing and you can see i'm not sure if you can see it inside it's uh, it's not very much like you saw two two wooden little wooden teaspoonfuls right but one thing i do end up doing with the persian tea i um uh i rinse it right now sometimes i use i use a strainer so i put the tea in there and i hold this under the tap right and i strain it sometimes i do that usually because I like my tea faster than uh, sooner rather than later I reduce the number of steps right I just pour tea in here and whoosh it around and then pour it out and these porcelain teapots I don't know if you'll be able to see it maybe I can get it in the sunlight oh you see those holes there you see those holes there uh, those hold the tea in the pot there's some little guys that come out and I usually just pour water in here whoosh it around and pour it out okay so we're gonna do that right now let me pour some water in this. And I'm gonna do this here so you see. Okay. Usually you do, I pour this in the sink, but I just want you guys to see this, right? So the tea is in there. Let's see if we can get the water happening. You can see the reflection of water, right? So what I end up doing is just pour this out. consider that rinsed and there's you know a couple of little guys in there as far as uh, tea leaves goes but good enough okay now since uh, that water is already boiled I'm gonna pour it in here so start the simmering uh, simmering process or letting the flavor out while we wait for this pot to boil so let's put this back on the plate. Bring this over. And uh, for this guy, um, one thing you gotta watch out for with uh, porcelain teapots when you pour uh, the lids. If you go too far, if you're trying to get all the all the tea out sometimes it falls over and that's what happened with this one we actually broke the lid of this one right but this is a different lid that we had and all i do is just put it upside down okay so the lid of this original one is gone but i guess we broke the porcelain pot of the other guy so we combined the two okay so all i'm going to do is just remove this and it's already steaming just put this on there and this thing uh usually for me uh, if i make it in the morning and i usually make the tea in the morning um you know if i'm home uh that thing's sitting there for eight eight hours you know i'm drinking throughout the day within about 15 minutes or so uh there's a nice color to this and we can start drinking it uh even five minutes you can get a little color and the beauty of this is uh, the top is the color and the bottom is the water 
So if I don't want it to be too dark, I just pour a little bit of that and just add hot water to it. If I want it to be really dark, I add a more of this, right? Make it dark, dark, dark. And then I add a little bit of just hot water, right? So you can adjust the darkness, just strength of the tea with this method. That's the color. That's your dilution, right? You just have hot water adding to the color, uh, however dark you want it, okay? As far as uh, the mathematics of this goes, let's take a look at, because it is something that I was curious about. Uh, sorry, the, 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 the calculation for this, but let's take a look at how many different ways, how many different teas I can make with these five different ingredients, right? And I do have, you know, some other ingredients I throw in every now and then, uh, but it's not often. And I do have a fair bit of teas here that people have brought as gifts to me because they know I love tea. Uh, so, um, you know, they've, they've given a fair bit of tea to us, right? Um, so I've had a, I've got a nice collection of different flavored teas. Sometimes I use those, especially in this. Um, sometimes in this as well, um, just let it simmer, put it in there, uh, put the lid on and just let it sit there and simmer for a while. Or in general, this is the method I use. Okay. As far as the mathematics goes, uh, let's do this. And I'm going to show you um, I brought a little paper, paper thing here so we can do, do our math. Okay. Now this is, uh, the math we're going to do for this is, uh, I've only sort of just touched on this, which is sort of related to um, uh, the video we did where we did the probability distribution of two set of dice, right? So this is sort of related to uh, probability and statistics, right? And it goes more into commutatorics and permutations and um, basically the order of things, how many different ways you can arrange something, right? But that and probability and statistics are you know, they're the same family, really. So I haven't really done the prep work for a lot of the math that we're going to talk about right now, but we will be doing it in the future. Um, and one of the other things that we've done and we're going to work our way towards, um, and you'll see when we come up with the formula, is basically um, uh, exponents, right? Radical and exponents. And we've talked a fair bit about radical and exponents, both in the language of mathematics where we... You know, I put together a whole summer I spent putting together a series on how to deal with exponents and radicals. And um, we did uh, at least a couple of videos for ASMR math dealing with exponents and radicals, okay? So let's, let's break this down. Let's figure out how many different ways we can make tea. And I've mentioned this before. The power of mathematics is really to quantify any system you want to quantify and to do pattern recognition and quantify your patterns that you do see, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the ingredients. We're gonna, and we're gonna figure out how many different types of tea we're gonna be able to make, okay? So think about it this way. Uh, let's see, this water is uh, almost boiling. I'm just gonna let it kick up in temperature a little bit more okay so let's do this like this let's call this how far can you see you can see it up here let's call this the ingredient right the item how many different items we have okay now let's assume we only had one item the main tea that I make right call it Persian black tea I got one item right now we can give it a name, we can call it black tea, B, if you want to call it, if you want to name it a variable, but I'm going to give it numbers, right? So our first item is the Persian black tea, right? Now, if we have one item, we boil the water, the only type of tea we can make is one type of tea, this tea. We put this, oops, we put this in the teapot and put the water on top and let it simmer, right? So the type of tea we can make there's only one type 
right? Uh, getting there, close to boiling. One type of tea. So the number of teas we can get out of this is one tea. Right? We'll get one type of tea. Now, let's say we have two ingredients to choose from. Let's say we got the Persian black tea, right? And mint. Okay, and these two combinations I use a lot, like a lot, right? So the Persian black tea is one. We call this one. Item one. And the mint tea is item two. Right? Now, let's kick this down now. Actually, no, let's leave it up. I want it to be really boiling a lot. Okay. So we got Persian black tea and we have mint. Now, how many different types of teas can we make? Right? Now, if I have two ingredients, I don't always have to put the two ingredients in, right? I could sometimes just put the black tea. Sometimes I could just put the mint. Oops. Sometimes I can just put the mint in there. Sometimes I can put both in there, right? So my choices are, if I have two ingredients, I could use one ingredient, the first ingredient. I could use the second ingredient. Or I could use, let's turn this down now. So turbo boil, you can see how quickly it boiled. And because of that pot being sitting down lower, it boiled a lot faster than this other one, right? So this one took this long to boil. So if I have two ingredients, I can use the first one. I could just use the second one, which I do a lot, just mint tea. Or I could use a combination of both of them together, right? So I could use one and two together. Right? So the number of different types of teas I can make is one, two, three. And order, the order I put the ingredients into the teapot doesn't make a difference, right? Because one and two is the same as two and one together, right? It doesn't make a difference if I put black tea in the pot first and then mint tea and then add the water, boiled water, or if I put the mint tea in first and then the black tea and then I add the water, right? Order doesn't matter. That's really important to keep in mind, okay? So there are basically, if I have two ingredients, one, two, three different types of teas I can make, right? That's cool. And these are basically the three main ways that I drink tea, right? Another ingredient is ginger, right? And ginger I use a fair bit too, either the ones I showed you with the cane sugar in there, and usually it's ginger just cut up, fresh ginger, right? So if we have three ingredients, right? We've got the Persian black tea, we got mint, and we got ginger. Right. Let's take a look at the number of different ways we can make this. Right. So I can make each one separately, which I do often. Right. Black tea, mint tea, ginger tea by themselves. So there's one by itself, two by itself, and three by itself. Right. And then I can make combos of two of these things at a time. So one and two together, one and three together, and two and three together, right? So I could go one and two together. I could put one and three together. Or I could put two and three together, right? And again, order doesn't matter. One and two is the same as two and one. One and three is the same as three and one. Two and three is the same as three and two, right? And the last combination I have is all three together. The whole smorgasbord goes in there, right? And I do this every now and then too. It's really delicious. Fantastic, really. One, two, and three. One, two, and three together. Okay. So what do we have? God, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different ways seven different teas 
types of teas I can make with three ingredients. So we have seven different types of teas here. Okay. I have a total of five ingredients. So let's take a look at how many different teas I can make with four ingredients, right? So for the fourth one, let's call it, uh, it's a mix between the, uh, the lemon and the rose. Let's just call the rose the fourth most popular one that I make. It's the one I've used the most, the longest. The, the lemon one is a recent find, right? But it's become part of our repertoire now. So let's say we got four ingredients. We got one, we got two, mint, we got ginger, and we got rose. So how many different ways can we make tea? How many different types of tea can we make out of four items, four ingredients? So we got all four of them we can do individually. It's seldom that I do the rose by itself, but I have in the past, right? So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four. Those are the four by themselves, right? And then I can do combinations of one and two, one and three, one and four, so double combinations, right? So I can go one and two, I can go one and three, I can go one and four. I can also do two and four. Mm, two and four. I could do two and three. I'm just gonna put it, I'm gonna group the doubles together. I can do two and three. I can do three and four. Three and four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, because I know the mathematics behind this, I know there's only six different methods I can make these with double combinations, right? The other choice I have, I can do three at a time, right? I could go one, two, three, one, two, four, two, three, four, right? So I could do one, oops, one, two, and three. I can do one, two, and four. And I can do two, three, and four. Two, three, and four. And the last combo that I have is, I can do all of them together, which is one, two, three, and four together. So how many different combos? I think I got them all in with. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, I'm missing one. 14. One, two, three, one, two, four, two, three, four, and one, three, four. Oh, we don't have one, three, four. So one, three, four as well. One, three, four. Okay. So there should be 15 here. Okay four of the singles, six of the doubles, four of the triples, and one of the quadruple, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So there's fifteen different methods here. Okay. Now if I have five ingredients, which I do, I got Persian black tea. I got mint. I got ginger. I got rose. And I got the lemon one. Right? I got five ingredients. Now, as you can tell, trying to figure out how many different methods, how many different types of teas, blends, we can make with five ingredients is going to be huge. I don't have enough room. Right, so we're gonna to have to come up with a pattern, or we're gonna to have to take a look at this thing to see if there is a pattern, right? And there is. That should be obvious because we're doing the mathematics of it, right? But there is, there is. And the pattern is this, and there's two ways you can think about this, okay? 
let's do this in red hopefully the red comes out nicely now if we take a look at this there's two different places we can look for patterns we can look for patterns here the total number of ways the total number of blends that we have or we can take a look at the different types of blend types and see if there's a pattern within the different types all right we're going to take a look at this first and then we're going to look at the other one because there's two different ways we can get to the same answer this one if we look at this this one is basically exponents and you sort of drive this using the binary system where each ingredient this is a set of five things that we have or set of four things that we have set of three set of two set of one right and the way it works is if we have one right if we just have one ingredient we have two choices we either include it or we don't include it right so if we're going to make tea if i'm going to boil water in my teapot i could either put the black tea in there and make black tea or i could just have hot water so there's two choices with this right so for this set um, if i use this as a set right in this location i could either have the tea or not have the tea and the way you can think about this is you can think about it as this the zero not having the tea in there so we just have boiled water right or we can think of having the tea in there right one choice two choices no tea have the tea right but that doesn't tell us this gives us two choices if we look at a binary system and we can only make one type of tea and the definition of a tea is we're including something in there so we're never going to make a tea of just boiling water right i've seen people do i do every now and then just boil water and let it cool down a little bit drink a little bit of warm water but that's not really tea that's just drinking warm water right so the way we're going to look at this is we have to have at least one of the ingredients there's got to be at least one in there so we're going to eliminate the zero one so if we do that then that's our one t now the way re we represent this in this location we have two choices right and it's basically two to the power um two to the power of one gives us two and we eliminate the one that doesn't have the t in there right so the formula for this is uh, i want to do this in something that's dark let's see is the green dark let's see if the green is dark nope not dark enough let's see if the blue is dark oh blue is dark so the formula for this right if we're going to figure this thing out um, i'm going to put the formula here okay well i'm going to do it like this two to the power of one is two minus one gives us one so the formula basically ends up being this i'm going to write it down here and then we're going to do the calculations here right so if we're going to use the binary system to figure out how many different types of teas we can make with n ingredients this is the formula we get two to the power of n minus one and the minus one is eliminating just the hot water right and hopefully that shows up yeah that should show up okay so if we're going to do the calculations and n by the way is the number of ingredients right this guy here is n these guys n is one n is two n is three n is four n is five right so for n is one this should be two to the power of one minus one two to the power of one is one minus one is one this one would be two to the power of we got two ingredients two minus one two to the power of two is four four minus one is three that works this one should be two to the power of we got three ingredients three minus one two to the power of three two times two is four times two is eight eight minus one is seven that works the formula is legit so far let's put this guys here the pens 15 is going to be two to the power of four we got four ingredients minus one 
2 to the power of 4 is 16. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. Minus 1 is 15. That's legit, right? So, so far for all of our four different items, different ways of ingredients that we had, groups of ingredients that we had, sets of ingredients that we had, all the numbers come out correctly. So if we assume that this is true for five, this would be two to the power of five minus one. Two to the power of five is five times five, uh, two, two times two is two, two times two is four, eight, 16, 32. 32 minus one is 31. So this guy would be 31 different methods. Let's put this here. We would have 31 different ways different blends of tea we could make with five different ingredients fantastic right that's a lot of uh, a lot of different teas right and the one again it's subtracting out just the boiling water because we're going to assume we always have to have at least one ingredient in there okay now these guys uh, let me just pour a little bit of tea because i'll show you how the darkness uh, uh, the darkness goes up with the dark tea, okay? Uh, as we, so if you take a look at this, right? Steaming a little bit, I don't know if you can see it. And I usually like my tea in glass, okay? So I put my finger on top of this so it doesn't, whoop. right? So that's the color we get after I'm not sure how long it took us to do this, right? And if I want this lighter, I just add boiling water. So I'm going to put this down on the plate so the bottom doesn't get dirty, all right? And I'm going to take the boiling water and be careful when you do this with the top not on there because the steam comes up. And you can just blow on it, right? Get rid of the steam and I can just add water and lighten it up and that's really light for me but that's okay right later on i'm going to drink it darker and what i end up doing is because i remove tea from the teapot i'm going to add more hot water to it just to raise the just to make sure that uh, i'm always going to have color in the teapot right sometimes uh, when i've shown people this uh, you know, they drain out the teapot, the porcelain pot, and they forget to put hot water in it. So when the next person comes along to drink tea, there's no color. There's no, you know, there's nothing they can do. So they have to pour boil water, um, put more water in there and wait for it to simmer, right? And this is going to be hot, so I'm just going to take a small sip. That's my morning tea, my first sip. I like my morning tea, really. It's really good. Um, so that's one way we can come up with an equation, right? And basically, our function for this would be, if we were thinking about this as a function, would be f of x is equal to 2n minus 1, or 2x minus 1, or f of n, or whatever it is. But basically, our formula to calculate how many different ways we can make tea out of n different items that's our formula right now I mentioned uh, that there's another way we can take a look at this all right and use uh, let's stick with the red okay the other way we can find a pattern and mathematics again is about pattern recognition right another way we can take a look at this and try to come up with a pattern is by looking at the different groupings that we have in the types of tea we can make okay so for this one there's only one type we have right we can just make one it's persian black tea this one we can group these like this we can group the singles right either just persian black tea or just mint tea or the blend persian and black or per, a black tea and the mint tea together, right? So we have two 
singles and one double, right? For this one down here, we have three different singles we can make. We have three types of double T's with two ingredients, two items mixed in there. And we got one triple, right? For the four ingredients, we have four of the singles. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six doubles. We got one, two, three, four triples. And we got one quadruple. Now, this distribution is something called Pascal's triangle, okay, uh, and it kicks into the binomial theorem. Now, let me show you how that works, and then we'll flip between these. I don't have enough room here, so I'm going to turn the page up on this. Okay, now, the way we laid this out was we had the type, uh, the items that we had were these, right? So we had item here, we had one item, we had two items, we had three items, we had four items, and we had five items, right? And the pattern that we had here was, if we take a look at this thing, we had one, two, one, three, three, one, four, six, four, one, right? And the way we drive this is, look at, look at this. The way we drive this is, let's do this in blue, okay? The way we drive this is, is called something called uh, Pascal's triangle. And it works like this. I'm gonna do here so we have room, right? So one, one, one. Okay, so we take a one, split into one and one. And then for the next row, what we do is, we take the one here, the outside is always one on the edges, right? And then we add the middle two guys to get the number here. So this becomes two. And then on the outside, we got one. And again, we start off for the next row. We have one. We add these two guys, we get three. We add those two guys, we get three. And on the edge is one just comes down. We do it again. One, add those two guys, you get four. Add those two guys, you get six. Add those two guys, you get four. And the one comes down, All right? Do again, this is one. Add those two guys, you get five. Add those two guys, you get 10, 10, five, and one. Okay. Now, if you notice, these are the numbers that we had, the combinations that we had here. Okay. Two, one, three, three, one, four, six, four, one. Two one three three one four six four one, right? And the way it works is, our blends. If we have one item, we can make one type of tea. It connects with that one. The one item is really, if, if it's a binary system, we have two choices. We could have a zero, have the ingredient, or don't have the ingredient. This one here represents not having any ingredient in the teapot so this row here is all just hot water right it's all no blend in the teapot right so we eliminate all those ones that's where the subtraction of one comes here okay so that's the one gone 
So what we end up having is, this is our one blend, this is our two blend. This is the different ways we can have. So this is one ingredient, right? This one, if we add these up, we get three, and there was three choices for this one. This one, if we add it up, we get seven, and there were seven choices for this one. This one, if we add it up, is 10, 15, right? That was the choices for this one, right? So this one had 15 choices. This one had seven choices. This one had three choices. This one had one choice. And our five ingredients would have, if we add this up, should give us, oops, 31. Uh, yep, 31. 15, 5 plus 10 is 15, plus 10, 25, plus 5, 30, 31 types. So that equals 31. If we have six ingredients, we could figure out how many six ingredients is. We can add all this up. Bring one here, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, 1, all right? So if we add these up, that's 6 plus 15 is 21, plus 20 is um, 21 plus 20, 41, uh, plus 15, 51, 56, plus 6, um, 56, 62, plus 1, 63, right? That should give us 63 for six different items, right? So let's check out our formula, see if that's legit. If our if this is n is six, right? Two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is sixteen, times two is thirty-two, times two is sixty-four. Sixty-four minus one is sixty-three. Correct. That works the same way. Very cool. So that's two different ways we've been able to figure out how many different combinations, right? One was a formula. This one is more visual, right? Pascal's triangle. And there is a third way. And the third way is the formula related to this. And this kicks into commutorics, permutations and commutorics, which is really um, statistics, right? And the formula for this is basically C, the number, the combinations that we have of n choose r, okay? And the sum of, basically it's, I'm gonna, uh, I didn't even know for, some notation of every choice. So this thing basically is a factorial, um, sort of equ equation, sort of calculation we do with a factorial, where n is the number of items we have, and r is how, how many of those items we're choosing okay so this one what it ends up being is is n factorial divided by um r factorial and n minus r factorial okay and factorial is something that i haven't talked about uh with you guys um yet but the factorial it means that basically whatever number you start off with, you subtract one every time and you multiply them together. Uh, should we do this one too? Let's do this one too. Why not? Okay. Let's uh, do, the, do this guy as well. Okay. So, so far we had Pascal's triangle figuring this out, right? We had sort of a binary system figuring out how many combinations we have. Now we're going to use combitorics to figure out how many, how many choices we have how many different blends we can make. And the commutorics one is, there's two different um, calculations systems that we have here. One is order matters, which we end up using a P here. And this one is order does not matter. And this one is relevant to us because as we talked about here, you know, one and two is the same as two and one. Three and one is the same as three and one, right? So let's talk about the combitorics version of this. The combitorics version of this is this, the formula we can use to figure this out. Um, as we said, it's C, N choose one. But if we had, let's do the five item one, right? Let's say we had five items. So N is five. 
So five items, five items. So the question would be, how many ways can we arrange five, uh, can we make a blend of tea using five items, using at least five items, or at most five items, right? So we have five items, we could use one, or we could use two, or we could use three, or we could use four, or we could use five, right? And the way this works is, you add these up. The answer to that question is going to be C. You got your five items, and you're only going to make a one blend. That's one at a time, right? The other choice would be, choose your items. You got five items. And you're going to group them in twos. So that's going to be two. Choose two from the five. Right? How many different ways can you choose two from five? Where order doesn't matter. The next one is five. Choose three. Next one is five. Choose four. All right? And the next one is Five, choose five. And we're not going to use five, choose zero, right? Usually with the summation, with the sigma notation here from n is equal, oh, sorry, um, r is equal to n, r is equal to zero to n, okay? Usually we would have a zero, but the zero represents uh, us not putting any ingredients into the teapot which means we're just drinking boiling water again, right? So we're not including that one, right? So if we end up using this, and the formula is this, is n factorial over um, r factorial, n minus r factorial, okay? Should have given myself more room here. That's the formula we have. The way it works is this becomes n factorial, which is 5 factorial, over r, which is 1 factorial, and n minus oh yeah, n minus r, which is going to be, um, what is it, 5 minus 1 factorial usually you do this with the zero included so i knew the first one was supposed to be one but we're eliminating the one right so if we're going to do this calculation and just to let you know factorial means this if i write down five factorial it means five times four times three times two times one right and you stop at one you don't go to zero so basically a factorial of something n factorial means n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 oops and not factorial this is just times times n minus 3 times whatever right so it's basically you start off with a number you subtract one every time until you get to one right so 4 factorial would be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 right so over here this would be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 1 factorial is just 1 times nothing 1 it's just 1 okay 5 fact 5 minus 1 is 4 factorial 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 right so this ends up being if we do this, because this is a multiplication and division, 4 kills 4, 3 kills 3, 2 kills 2, 1 kills 1. So here we just have 5. Okay, And if we take a look back, that's what we got here, 5. And if we take a look at back at this one, well, we didn't do the combinations for the 5 because it was too many, but you can see this one. There's five different ways to make singles, right? So the first one is five. Okay. Now, for this one, this will be plus five factorial over 
2 factorial, 5 minus 3 factorial. Okay. So this would be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 2 times 1, which is 2 factorial, times 5, oops, minus 2, not 3. I'm doing it too fast in my head. So that's 5 minus 2 is 3. So that becomes 3 times 2 times 1, right? So 3 kills 3, 2 kills 2, 1 kills 1. 2 goes into 4 twice, 5 times 2 is 10, right? So that's plus, which is 10, okay? This one is going to be 5 factorial over 3 factorial, 5 minus 3 factorial, which is plus 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 3 times 2 times 1 times 5 minus 3 is 2, 2 times 1. So 3 kills 3, 2 kills 2, 1 kills 1, 2 goes into 4 twice, 5 times 2 is 10. Okay, we're going off the board, and we can do it for these ones too, and what we end up having is exactly what we had here, right? Uh, what did we have? 10, the next one's 5, the next one's 1. Okay, 5 choose 5. It's just going to be 5 factorial over 5 factorial, which is 1, right? So this is another way we can do our calculations, okay? So basically three different ways, right? Three different ways we can come up with some kind of mathematical analysis to quantify our system here, right? Which is brilliant, which is how many different ways can we make T, right? Which is... An amazing thing to be able to do right which is an amazing thing to be able to do which is really uh, what the power of uh, mathematics is right the power of mathematics is oh, that tastes amazing uh, the power of mathematics is to take a look at any system right take a take a look at it analyze it Take it a few layers and see if you see patterns. And if you see patterns, that means you can put equations to that system, right? If you can put equations to that system, that you understand that system, you can make predictions in that system, right? You can analyze that system, right? And let's have a sip through uh, the, on the uh, ginger tea as well, okay? Let's lift this up. And if you've seen, uh, if you've seen my videos, you know I like drinking out of this guy. And this one oh. and the handle of this gets hot um, when uh, when you put the the heater on it okay so basically ginger tea is clear Ooh. I'm gonna let the ginger simmer a lot more because I like, uh, I like my ginger nice and strong. Okay. Very nice, very nice. But the ginger needs, uh, needs more time to simmer. Okay, it, go, it simmers faster when you put it on the teapot. Okay, and I do put ginger in the teapot as well. And let me put this. Here, let me pour a little bit more of this so you see how the color changes. Okay. You can see it's getting a little bit darker, right? Compared to the original pour. And since I've already got a tea going, I'm just gonna pour this one back into it again. Cool. Okay. Um, one other thing I actually want to show you um, when it comes to making tea is how to uh, get rid of the, the loose leaves because this thing, when you're done with it, there's going to be loose leaves in there, right? And you don't want to pour that thing down the drain because if you pour it down the drain, you might clog up the drain, right? So what I end up doing, and let me show you this. What I end up doing is, uh, 
you know, if I buy things that have uh, plastic containers, what I do, I cut, I take a knife, sharp knife, and be careful with this, right? I usually end up putting this down on the table and putting the knife in there and going, and not too hard, and you don't want to hold it like this because if the knife goes through too much, you'll cut yourself when you're holding it like this. So put it down, hold the thing in the bottom, if you know, and you do need to hold it. Sometimes these things are pretty tough. And puncture the hole, and you, you know, put cracks in it like this, and you can see it through here as well, right? And then what I do to get rid of the loose leaves, I just put this in the sink, and I pour the tea in there. Or, you know, if the tea's all finished, if I'm not using it anymore, I just pour water and get the get the tea leaves, you know, all suspended in the water, and I pour it, pour pour whatever's in the teapot in here, and probably end up doing that two or three times to get rid of all the loose leaf tea. And when you put this in the sink, the water drains from the bottom, and all that's left inside is a loose leaf tea, and then that you can compost, right? Uh, and that's what we end up doing. It's really good compost, actually. Tea leaves are amazing compost. Um, I'm not going to do this right now because I just made the tea. Uh, I'll do this probably later on. I usually do this on a daily basis. Um, I try not to leave the loose leaf teas in the teapot until the next morning, unless they're ginger. Ginger and mint I leave. The, the black tea... Uh, I don't leave usually. I try not to anyway. Uh, famous last words, I try not to leave it there um, for the next day because I don't really drink uh, tea that's left over, dark tea that's left over the next next day unless it's mint or ginger. Mint and ginger for sure, those are good. I actually bo usually boil more water and pour it into the teapot again. Okay, so I usually keep that going for a couple of days. Um, so that's about it. That's um, that's how I make tea. Uh, those are the different the, the five different uh, ingredients that I use. Uh, black mint more than most, uh, and ginger as well. Ginger a fair bit as well. Okay. I hope that answered your question of how I make tea. Um, and uh, we did a little mathematics in the process, which I really wanted to do. And again, sorry for the delay for this, but uh, uh, my list of videos that I need to get done is fairly large now. And I'm trying to combine a lot of videos together. Uh, and if I can, for sure, overlay them with mathematics, because uh, that's the name of the game, right? Once you see, uh, from my channel anyway, once you see things uh, through the lens of mathematics, that gives you a lot more options of, uh, uh, or a lot more appreciation anyway for whatever system that we are talking about. And this is one of them. Uh, and I've wanted to do this for a while now. So from now on, when um, your friends come over, they're going to say, oh, what type of tea do you have? I'm going to tell them, uh, well, I can make you 31 different blends of tea. Which one would you like, right? Um, that's it. Uh, fun little video. I like doing this very much and thank you for the request. Uh, that's it for now. I'll see you guys in the next video.